table. I love this color scheme so much. We got some legs, yeah. and we got an apron. This piece goes like this. Something like that, there we go. So yeah, I want to figure out logo placement and what are the panels for this. We'll set up the hex table right here. No, I'm envious of Pennsylvania right now. They have a jig for this. I'm not sure what the actual tolerance on these is, but I am trying to be as precise as I can. For the 32nd anyway. First time we're doing it live. Now that I did that, I should be able to do it a little bit quicker. It took sure. me, you know, 10 or so minutes of messing around. Not bad considering you're doing it all by hand. Hunter was working on, but Hunter lacks work ethic. He's not here. Oh. He's lazy. He's a shirker. Who's that? Hunter. Oh yeah, terrible. He left this hex table in a state of disrepair. So Ian, have you had a chance to look into this at all? Briefly, yes. Seems like the issue, the basic issue is that when he assembled these with the leg, it looked like this. There was a big gap. There was a, there was a large gap between the armrests when he put them together. So there's a couple things that could make that happen. One is if the inside surface of this armrest is not flush with the inside surface of the rail. Oh, because because this is set. This distance is set. Yeah. So because this is set, when this shifts up, it basically yeah. shifts this joint up, which creates a gap. Exactly. So that can happen. That makes sense. That does not appear to actually be the problem. That would have been a hunter problem. Yeah. That would have been Hunter sucks, and yeah. that's why that's so, so far Hunter does not suck. No. We'll get there. <laughs> See, the problem is, we make these leg shapes in Massachusetts. Yeah. We put these holes in them in Pennsylvania. So is that Hunter's leg or, or the one that, or one that we made? Hunter's leg. Okay. Let's bolt one together. Sure. That's not glued in. Dry fit. Dry fit. Oh, it moved. Gotta get it. That one moved too. So yeah, that is all kinds of shitty. Now you you should you see oh sorry Matt you see that the shoulder here where the apron meets the leg. That seam right there should close and be tight at the same time that this should close and be tight. Those need to meet at the same time. So yeah, what are what are the things that could be going wrong, Ian, that would lead to gappage? This armrest, it gets attached to this rail. Those, they're separate pieces. Yeah, yeah. You could slide it too far one way or the other when you're putting it together. That also doesn't seem to be the problem. The other thing that could be wrong is the location of these holes. The end of the rail registers, the tenon registers where it should go, and then the hardware holds it in place. If the location of the entire rail moves in or out on the leg, this gap will open and close. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. Miters are hard because, like, any unalignment opens the miter or makes it so the miter can't close or you get a, a gap on the inside of the miter or a gap on the outside of the miter. Butt joints, which is a joint like this, they're simpler because there's a lot fewer axes to sort of keep track of. If anything goes wrong with a miter, you notice. Yeah. So how did we make those holes? I think Hunter just drill pressed them. Hunter drilled them on a drill press. Did he really? Yeah. Now, actually, 
actually. You've got to admire the bravery. This might not be Hunter's fault. Oh. So. I stand corrected. Hunter had this, which is a drawing of our leg, the drawing of our rail joinery. So. Now this doesn't have the joinery specked out on it though. We can derive it off this drawing. So see this line right here? which goes through the center of that tenon and then the centers of these holes. Yes, sir. 1.625. That's calling out the distance from that zero point inside corner yep. to the center of the hole, yep. which should be the same distance as the point of the corner block to the center of that hole. From this point here yep. to the center of to these holes. The center, the center point of that hole should be an inch and five eighths. Okay. Oh, that's pretty damn good. It's pretty good. That is actually pretty good. It's in the right place. Okay. So, he put it in the place the drawing says to put it. I think the drawing's wrong. I don't think it's updated to reality. I know that to the center of the hole in the Pennsylvania legs is an inch and a half, not an inch and five eighths. In woodworking, that's a mile. Yeah. That's an eighth of an inch. Is that is that what that gap is? Uh, probably that close. Is, right here is where Hunter put the holes. It's saying it should be an eighth of an inch back. So it's pulling everything in. So this armrest will move in, this will move in, and it will close this gap. That's where we went wrong. Fucking engineers. The engineers, as always. The engineers. To be fair, the woodworkers could have not told the engineers to update it. Impossible. How dare you? <laughs> How dare you, sir? Besmirch the, the fine reputation of our craftsmen. Hunter lacks work ethic. Oh. He's lazy. A shirker. Don't trust the numbers. Never trust the numbers. Sounds like we need to have probably Josh Watson or Matt Klein go through, find out what reality is, and then update all the drawings. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, that sounds like the play. And then in terms of this, we need to move these holes that way. That is impossible. It's improbable. Moving holes is hard. When you try to re-drill it, it's gonna to wanna to go back to the original hole, mm. right? Like that's the problem. It wants to go to its home. You wanna to go to your home. You wanna go home. Are you too good for your home? Answer me! On the way home from Pennsylvania, I stopped to get a coffee. The gentleman at the register said it looked like Adam Sandler. I can see it. I can see it. It's in the nose. Oh yeah? Yeah, you've got a nose. A Sandler-esque extrusion. I told him I was much funnier than Adam Sandler. <laughs> <laughs> Accurate. Yeah. We should probably make a new set of legs. What's up, Matt? Fancy. I'm using chiaroscuro. <laughs> I said consummate vase, consummate. These aren't actual size. No, but they're proportional. The scale is correct, even if this would be quite miniature. Hey, there he is. Whoa. We're not here to talk about Mario. No. Uh, we're here to talk about hexagons. Ooh. Bestagons. The hexy the smexy table. Bestagons. Hexagons are bestagons. Who's that from? I don't know. Bees. Let's go find Ian and Hunter. Uh, okay. And we'll bring this. Wow. You're going classic, classic oh, yeah. drafting. Well, not quite drafting, but close ish. Yeah. Close ish. Charoscuro, Jason. What? Charoscuro. Charoscuro? Yeah. Isn't that. The Brazilian, Brazilian barbecue. <laughs> <laughs> this is the table structure we're doing. 
And so far, this, this, is, this is one piece we have settled on. We're defining our vocabulary, our limits, our structure. We're trying to design the tabletop. But you can do anything! Yeah. The <laughs> blank canvas, mm -hmm. that sucks. We understand it's gonna be oak, we understand it's gonna be wenge, we understand it's gonna be silver. Yeah, we have that vocabulary. And this is very important to me. This little motif. Yeah, right? I agree. This is a piece of a circle. So I started sketching. I want a little direction. So I sort of, ones that actually went somewhere. One, two, three, maybe four, maybe five. These six, seven, I just think yeah. these are so shitty. No. These are feeling very uh, Viking shield. Am I the only one? Like, there's two main families here. Yep. There's circular symmetry. Yep. And then there's sort of non-circular symmetry. I just am looking, so what I would like from this meeting is to get a general direction. Yep. Then I could do larger sized ones and actually yep. just do iterate in this direction. I really like this shape. It's just so. like hex with the little scallops or coves or whatever we're calling those. It like echoes this a lot with this kind of border. I don't love the circle I on really it. like the border on this guy. Yeah. Yep, I could, they could. Actually, one thing we have not done is, so this is great. We still do need to get the shield designed. No. Oak burl background, wenge tree, so and then strange. silver stringing to, to cut it out from the background. Yeah. I think that wenge would look really nice. Or ebony, whatever, yeah. just dark. Okay. Dark tree. Yeah. So, yeah, Hunter could move forward with four of the aprons, and then the next two I need to still do. We're locked in on four of the aprons. Yeah. Four of the aprons. 66% done. That's, <laughs> now we can make decisions based on that decision. Yeah. Next week, I want to have this design done. 100% done on this table. Sounds good. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Ian, two, come on. Come on. Hmm? One, three? Come on. One, yeah, what am I? Give two. Me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's got there. <laughs>completely trust me to make all of these design decisions, I take it, for the, the Signature Series hex table. Mm -hmm. Let me get you on speakerphone for that. Yep. Go ahead. 100% of my faith is in your hands. There you go. Make design wow. decisions. Okay. Full faith and confidence. You heard it here first, folks. Well, that makes this easier, because Jason, you're fired. <laughs>